as much as you can, why don't you explain how, how this is important, what Bob's talking about, what you're talking about. Can you like give us like the gist of how this is going to change some of the science? I'm talking about uh, what, uh, the, the pollution bottom? size. Yeah, the pollution size aerosols. Well, I, 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 I would. Uh, well, it has uh, cl climatic impl implications. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we are uh, uh, polluting the air and uh, changing the skyscape as much as we are changing the landscape. I agree everybody, with that. Everybody knows how the landscape uh, used to be uh, uh, un undisturbed, and now it is all squares and yes. uh, undisturbed. If we were able only to compare the skyscape uh, to uh, the way it is now, to the way it, it used to be when it, it was pristine, you yes, would see as much difference. I, 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 I fully agree. agree with you on that. So, so um, a little bit about what we do, Climate Viewer News, we're trying to, to, to talk about climate change that people can fix today. Not climate change in the distant future. I'm a, I mainly focus on things like pollution you know, plastic in the ocean, things like that. But for me, climate change is a very big subject. And so, so climate change has two parts of the equation. One is greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. which uh, are warming the climate. Mm -hmm. And the physics of that is as simple as the physics of you pull in cold night uh, additional uh, blanket and you get warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the complicated factor uh, in, in large part is the aerosols, the mm -hmm. particulate air pollution that uh, actually in many ways work uh, to uh, offset some of the yeah. uh, yes, heat and some of the warming. Uh, and uh, the, this has much uh, greater complexity and uncertainty, uh, which dominates the overall uncertainty in, uh, our, in how much uh, the climate is changing because uh, yes, of our uh, uh, activity. Yes. And, and, that, and, and in that large uncertainty is, is what is uh, allowing the decision makers to uh, go, uh, to, to be off the hook. Yeah, in, yeah, exactly. So they don't have enough information at this point to really make the kind of determinations that, that they're making. And what I see as a problem is I'm looking at the IPCC charts and they're like cirrus clouds like this. So when you say blanket over the sky, are you referring to the cirrus cloud heat trapping effect or more just well, the, the CO2 greenhouse the, gases the effect? Greenhouse gases heat, uh, heat trapping effect, but uh, cirrus clouds can in certain situations warm, in other situations cool. Mm -hmm. The low level clouds uh, are uh, typically cooling mm -hmm. uh, very strongly uh, when we pollute them. And, uh, the, and, 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 and now uh, we, we are just don't have enough handle of, of how to do that. Uh, my main thrust of my own research is developing means to quantify that. And I so that, that you I, can understand the process of how those clouds are want, formed and how water is formed and rainfall and all of that, right? Yes, because the, 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 the fundamental process is that each particle of air pollution can serve as a site for a nucleation of cloud droplets. Uh, uh, so if the air is more polluted, there are a larger number of smaller droplets that mm -hmm. are slower to coalesce into rain, s uh, slower to freeze into uh, ice precipitation. Overseeding is the term that I've heard. Have you, uh, you've heard that uh, term, right? Uh, yeah, you, you, may, you may say so, uh, to take it from uh, uh, advertent weather modification, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, which so is a small subset, subset of what we all do. To the yeah, climate. certainly. So, so with, the, with the, um, the cloud creation thing, I find it fascinating, um, you know, the recent paper, I believe it was 2000, I'm thinking it's Lee et al. 2009, the one, the paper where he said that uh, the E3 AWACS that was making cirrus clouds over um, the UK, that it was trapping heat 5,000 times as much as all the CO2 emitted by aircraft since the dawn of aviation. This is, uh, this is the second paper in the 2001 paper on the diurnal temperature range. Are you familiar with those? I, I, I'm not familiar with this particular paper, but okay. I, but, uh, uh, I, I don't buy uh, uh, any claim that uh, uh, that uh, man-made generated cloud is uh, trapping heat more than the man-generated uh, 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 greenhouse gases. That okay, so you, so, okay, so, I, so you I, think I, you think I, that his statement is like way out of line? I, I may. I'm just uh, relating to what you say, okay. and I'm not familiar with uh, such a statement. Okay, well, sir. Uh, but uh, maybe I'm, I'm not. Uh, maybe it is a misstatement. Okay, that's that's fine. So, what, so just generally speaking, what happened was they grounded all the flights in 2008 because of the volcano. There was an E3 AWACS making clouds over the UK, and they made all these big statements about because basically there was a grounding. You're talking about AWACS, the, the AWACS E3 the, AWACS, this airplane that the, did the circles over um, over the UK, and it made a cirrus cloud bank that covered almost half of the UK. All right. Now, now I think that I, I, 
that I, 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 I know what, what, uh, is, uh, what you mentioned. Uh, uh, the, the, the particles from the volcano also are good were, ice nuclei. That's right, they were a part and, of the, and, the and mix. that would uh, help to create a very small and large number of uh, ice crystals, a lot that would have very large uh, uh, heat trapping capability. Uh, but it has nothing to do with uh, man-made. So but you're, you're saying that because there was a volcano, it was a special circumstance, mm -hmm. and there would have been different types of cirrus clouds created than under normal circumstances. Right. So his assumption, 5,000 times greater, is probably way off yeah. because of the volcano. He, he, he was taking credit <coughs> of clouds that he did not make. <laughs> That's an excellent way to put it. Um, yeah, so um, for, for my, my viewers at home specifically, um, there's a lot of people who are concerned about climate change. They see it over their house every day and they see Delta Airlines. You know, you start a day with a blue sky, you end up with a gray sky. We're real concerned about that, um, that type of climate change that we see every day. And I hear that, you know, climate scientists are receiving death threats from chemtrail conspiracy guys. It's, it's, we're in a situation where there's a lack of information, people are scared. They, they simply look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the artificially produced cirrus uh, clouds uh, from the uh, exhaust of the airplanes, uh, of the jets, uh, and, and they misinterpret it as chemtrails. Uh, uh, when, you, when you burn, uh, or um, uh, fuel. The products are uh, CO2 and mm -hmm. water vapor. And, and water soot, vapor and, and soot and sulfuric such, acid. Uh, soot and sulfur. a, a little bit, uh, but uh, yes, but that, that's what... Uh, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm, I don't mean to be rude, but yeah. isn't soot the cloud condensation nuclei of choice? I mean, when we're talking about cloud seeding, you're a cloud seeding expert. When you're making clouds from planes, you have to have a cloud seed. So it, obviously they put out a lot of water vapor, but they need seeds for it to of stick course. to. They, yeah, they, they, they pollute as much as diesel engines, mm -hmm. diesel engines uh, uh, of, of a bus or a truck uh, mm -hmm. uh, put uh, out many very small nanoparticles that are, that are serving as uh, those nuclei on, on which the water condenses, okay. on which uh, the ice condenses aloft. But it is not more damaging than the vehicles on, on the ground, on, on the surface that each of us is uh, driving to work. I, I agree with you on that. So um, the, the last question I want to ask you is about, um, hold on, before I do that, ICAO colloquium on contrail mitigation, Ulrich Schumann, you're familiar with the guy? Ulrich uh, Schumann yeah, from yes. the German DLR? Yeah, yeah. He came up with something called the contrail series prediction tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're rolling this into the FAA's aviation environmental design toolkit. And basically it's a, uh, a computer model that tells the planes when to burn fuel, when not to, how to avoid ice supersaturated regions so they don't form contrail cirrus. I interviewed the, the head of the Aviation Climate Change yeah. Research Initiative. His name is Dr. Rangasai Halthori. And he made a statement to me that concerned me. And he said, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. Ulrich Schumann at the colloquium said, we want less warming, more cooling contrails, predictable for operational control. I can show you the references. Okay, I, I can, so I can what do you, what, what, can you explain this to us? Okay, uh, this is uh, an effort to minimize the warming effect uh, of the cirrus. Cirrus are warming overnight, not during the day. That's right. So if uh, the aviation tries to avoid uh, uh, making uh, contrail overnight, then there is a modest contribution to cooling the climate. Okay, I spoke, I spoke with Dr. So that, Red, that, yeah. That's a positive thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Dr. Renaud Richter, he, he said, that they refer to this as earth radiation management as opposed to solar radiation management. So solar radiation management is blocking incoming sunlight, but to allow the heat to escape the space, they call that earth radiation right, because management. Because that's, that's earth radiation. The cirrus are, uh, because they are cold, they, they emit less than the underlying warmer uh, surface. Yeah. So, so that's, a, that's a great concern for me because it sounds to me that that's geoengineering. We are all doing geoengineering, if you like it or not. I know. Did you come I, here by vehicle? I you, came you here on a plane and I geoengineered my way across the southeast. Yeah, yeah. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from. So, so let's. Uh, so, so I come back to where I started. The skyscape is not more natural than the landscape. And he is right. And he is totally right. Thank you very much for that interview, Mr. Rosenfeld. Um, Daniel Rosenfeld, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Expert on cloud seeding, thank you for taking the time and to climate talk with change. It. And climate change. These are two aspects are of the same thing. thing. Same thing. I agree with you. Thank you very much for doing the interview. I appreciate it. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, 
It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.